When we first found out that Jackson was gonna have this condition, we didn't know what to think. We didn't know what was gonna happen, how, if he was gonna be okay, if it, what the survival rate was. When I was 18 weeks pregnant, we went in for the anatomy scan and they couldn't find the heart very well. Jackson is a young baby who was actually diagnosed prenatally before birth with a congenital heart defect that involved a defect of one of the valves, the main valve that allows the blood to inflow into the pumping chambers. So normally there should be two valves into those pumping chambers and he was born with one big valve. It's a condition called an atrioventricular septal defect. I um, met Jackson and uh, his parents when he was uh, two months old. Um, he was referred by one of my colleagues in cardiology with the diagnosis of complete atrioventricular septal defect. It's a condition that we see frequently here at Phoenix Children's. With Jackson, we went and did a couple of things. His operation involved separating the chambers of the heart. We have to put a patch to do that. That patch was also going to divide the right and left-sided valves. Uh, unfortunately, his left-sided valve was already leaking moderately. We went home, he was finally off the methadone and narcotics for two weeks, and that's when I realized something still wasn't quite right. He was still huffing and puffing and kind of turning blue. I took him back in, I said, I think something else is wrong, so they tested for everything and just turned out that he couldn't tolerate the leak in his mitral valve, and that's when they determined that he was gonna have to have that mitral valve replaced, which is very rare in infants. The choices for valve replacement in children are not great. First of all, children grow, so they outgrow the valve um, over time. Second, these valves are man-made and they require a blood thinner for life. There is an alternative of a valve that is used in the pulmonary position in children, the melody valve. In Jackson's case, we were able to use this valve in a, a little bit more creative fashion and with the help of Dr. Velez, we were able to implant it directly within the mitral valve. And the advantage of this valve now for him is that firstly, he doesn't require blood thinner medicine, which he would require for any other mechanical type valve. And the other advantage is that as he grows, this allows us in the future to go in with a catheter and with a balloon, we can actually adjust the size of this valve and actually make it bigger over time. I got on Facebook and said, has anyone had Melody valve in mitral position? And everyone blew up and said, you have to go to a different hospital in a different state. So I freaked out. I actually told Dr. Velez because we're real with each other. And I said, I'm getting a second opinion. And he actually helped me get the second opinion. And then he personally came to my room at seven o'clock at night after he'd done an emergency surgery at another hospital. He came and sat with me for two hours and talked to me and said why he knows he can do it. She was asking me, so if you do have to use that, have you ever done it before? And I said, well, no, I have prepared for it about four or five times, but I've been able to repair the valve. And then we finished the operation, came off the heart-lung machine, and it looked great. So now he's just being monitored by his cardiologist, making sure that the melody valve is working. At Phoenix Children's Hospital, the doctors are amazing, and the nurses put in grueling hours, and that's not an easy job. They come in there every day with a smile on their face, and they make you feel better about, about being there, even though it's hard to be there. He is going to run around, he's going to climb trees, do the monkey bars like any other child and not think about this twice.